In this video, we're going to look a little more closely at how the dot product can be used to calculate the angle between two vectors. Um, so I've graphed two vectors here, and um, I've actually formed a triangle because I'm going to chart. I'm going to actually make the connection between uh, the law of cosines and and um, and dot product. First, I'm going to call this vector two three something. I'm going to call this vector u. And let's call uh, 4, negative 1, V. All right, so I've graphed these two vectors, and you should do the same. And I've formed a triangle, so that red line is the third side of the triangle, which connects the arrowheads of my two vectors. So again, U would be, clearly U would be this one here. And V is this one over here. Okay, so let's let's just use the law of cosines uh, to find the angle between the two vectors, which in this picture is angle C. So our goal is to find angle C. So our goal will be to find angle C. So we don't know any of the angles right now. We do know two of the sides. Actually, we know three of the sides um, because side B is just the length of vector U, right? And we know how to find... Uh, the length of uh, the length of a vector or the magnitude of a vector, we have a formula for that. Or you could just draw a triangle and do the Pythagorean theorem. But it, um, in any case, if you look at vector u, the length of vector u, or side b, you'd see that its length must be the square root of uh, 2 squared plus 3 squared. Or in other words, the square root of 13. Right, and again, that's also the magnitude of u, so make sure you mark that down. It's the magnitude of u. Um, similarly, the magnitude of uh, v is side a, the length of side a. And that's just, let's see, the square root of uh, negative 4 squared plus 1 squared, which is the square root of 17. Okay, but that's just the magnitude of vector v. And now side c, how do we find side c? Well, we can use the distance formula, um, or you could, you could make a little right triangle. Um, you could make a, a right triangle viewing c as the hypotenuse. And then what I'm thinking of is this, sort of making this right triangle right here. This picture is getting confusing, but it, you should see now that the that side C is just the square root of. Um, so what's that horizontal distance? It looks like one, two, three, four, five, six squared plus, and that vertical distance is 2 squared. So that looks like the square root of 36 plus 4, which is the square root of 40. Okay, now that doesn't correspond to a vector, right? That's just the distance between the two tips, the vector heads, rather. All right, so how do we find angle C? Well, we, we use the law of cosines, which we know. So the law of cosines, uh, the version we're going to use is the one that starts with c squared. So c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of c. It's capital C. Okay, so let's just plug in. So c squared, well that's just root 40 squared. So I'm just going to write that as 40 here. a squared is just root 17 squared, so I'm just going to write that as 17, and b squared is root 13 squared, so I'm just going to write that as 13. Minus 2 times a, well a is root 17, times b, which is root 13, cosine 
of C. So let's see, let's do a little cleaning up. This adds up to 30. So this is 40 equals 30 minus 2. And remember when you're multiplying radicals, you can make it one radical and multiply um, what's sort of what's in, uh, underneath. So 17 times 13 is 221. Cosine of C. All right, so let's see. I'm going to subtract 30 from both sides. So I'm going to kind of go down here and subtract 30 from both sides. And I get 10 equals negative 2 square root of 221 cosine of C. And now I'll divide both sides by negative 2 square root of 221. And so what I'm left with is, and this is a this is the result I want to go for, so I'm gonna I'm gonna write it down here actually. What I want to show you is that what you get is cosine of c, cosine of c equals um, negative five. Uh, so it's ten over negative two square root of two twenty one, but ten divided by 10 divided by negative 2 is just a negative 5. So I could really write this as negative 5 divided by the square root of 221. And so what's the, so who cares, right? Well, we're never going to have to use the law of cosines ever again to find the angle between two vectors. If we look sort of at what this is, what the result is saying. First of all, this root 221, remember where that came from. It came from, I'm going to circle it in orange. It came from right here, and well, I circled it in red already, but now it's in orange. Um, that root 17 times root 13, and what are those? Those are the magnitude of u and the magnitude of v, right? So this here, root 221, is the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. That's the root 221. And what about that negative 5? Well, that negative 5 is just the dot product, the dot product of u and v. So if you don't believe me, let's go off to the side and do it. u dot v would just be so u dot v is just going to be 2 times negative 4 plus 3 times 1, which is negative 8 plus 3, which is negative 5. So it's the dot product. And so, if we look, put it all together, we've got that cosine of c equals negative 5, which is u dot v, divided by root 221, which is the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. And that's the formula we're going to use, and I'm going to write it again down here in, let's do, let's do black. I'm going to write it down here in black. The angle between two vectors, um, and let's, let's say the angle between two vectors, so I'm now I'm going to make the general statement. The angle between, between two vectors, let's call it theta, can be determined by using this formula. So the cosine of that angle between the two vectors is equal to the dot product of those two vectors divided by the product of the magnitudes. All right. Um, so, this, by the way, this doesn't, I didn't prove anything, I just kind of did the law of cosines and show you that it, kind of like just showed you that this formula works. But from now on, we're going to use this formula to get the angle between two vectors. 
Um, notice this also implies if you, you know, obviously we're going to end up finding the angle. This also implies, if you like this statement better, that the angle equals cos inverse of the dot product divided by the product of the magnitudes. So whichever version you like, um, but that's what we're going to be using uh, to calculate the angle between two vectors.